Look, without further ado, I'd like to uh, welcome our first speaker, Nick Selby, who is the managing director of uh, CEO and managing director of Lukapa Diamonds. Nick was appointed as the CEO and MD of Lukapa in October 2023. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you to Lutzo for those kind words. Pretty accurate. Thanks for giving my age away. A number of years I've been in the business. The Copper Diamond Company is a multi-opportunity diamond company. We're a well-established producer of alluvial diamonds in Angola, where we've been operating successfully probably for the past 15, 16 years. We also run a very extensive Kimberlite exploration program, and we are looking for the source of these di alluvial diamonds that we're recovering. The copper is listed on the ASX under the ticker LOM. We are currently debt free, and the current NAV per share is 36 Australian cents, that is. The copper also owns the Merlin Diamond Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. We're we'll currently finalizing a new mining project to start production probably within the next two years which we're aiming at. Merlin, as you might know or not know, has a York resource of 4.4 million carats in the ground. And we expect to be updating the market in the next couple of months about our new low-cost capital plan to phase in the production and return Australia to the global diamond mining map. There's no, there hasn't been a diamond mine in Australia since Argyle shut down. Natural diamonds have a long history throughout the world which transcends cultures. They possess a timeless allure and are often celebrated for their brilliance and beauty. For centuries, they've been a symbol of regalia, luxury and love, and celebrated by everyday people as well as many famous queens, some more famous than others. You just have to look at the exciting news now that um, came out last week, the week before, of the second largest gem diamond ever recovered, which was unearthed in Botswana at the Karoe mine. And to see how much excitement that's created within the diamond industry right now. The only one bigger than that was the Cullinan, which came in at 3,106 carats. At the moment, the global diamond industry like many industries, are facing some serious headwinds. Except our gold brothers and sisters, of course, they're out of that equation, they've got tailwinds. The downturn in China, inflation in the US, war and conflict in the Middle East and Ukraine have certainly put the retail sector under pressure, which has also created an oversupply of rough and polished diamonds over the past year. We have seen the major producers lower their production targets and some mines have closed. So this, together with the upcoming retail season, will hopefully lead to a much better 2025 for us. Added to this is the ongoing disruption to the global diamond retail jewelry market where the rise of laboratory grown diamonds has certainly impacted the trade in natural diamonds. Lab-grown diamonds now make up approximately 20% of the total global diamond, diamond retail jewelry sales by value, from zero to 20. While lab-grown diamonds hit peak prices when they first arrived in the market, they have since collapsed and have lost a lot of their initial value. The market for lab-grown has turned, and we and what we have witnessed in the last 18 months or so is that multiple diamond lab companies across the US and Europe have either closed up shop or they've been forced in order to survive to pivot to manufacturing for technology applications such as diamond wafers used in electronics and things like that, just repurposing themselves. This is good news for the natural diamond industry as we are not the same product at the consumer end and natural diamonds have largely retained their value despite coming under pressure. It remains the target of the natural diamond industry to clearly differentiate the two products. It is apparent that this strategy is now working. 
And in my personal view, lab-grown diamonds will become the next cubic zirconia, and they'll find their place within the fashion industry, the fashion jewelry market. That being said, the natural diamond market has certainly felt their impact. And although it hurts, we've been there before, and we've always recovered from it. The point is that natural diamonds retain their value, and the most important attributes that set natural diamonds apart of value and uniqueness. Carp has been fortunate during this challenging period in that the production emanating from Lulo is large and high value. And these goods have not seen the same downward pressure on prices as the rest of the market has. Since production began, Lulo has generated more than half a billion US dollars in revenue. Our alluvial diamond mine in Angola is world renowned for producing high value large diamonds. Since mining began in 2015, 45 diamonds larger than 100 carats have been recovered. The slide you've got up there now shows the top 12 of those 45. And on that slide, those top 12 valued at about 65 million US dollars. The largest diamond in there is that in the top left hand corner is the 404 carat, which was recovered in uh, 2016, February in fact. We sold it for 16 million. The guys that bought it cut and polished it and produced that beautiful piece of jewelry on the right. And that went to auction and sold for 32 million. While it's all very nice to recover these large valuable stones on a regular basis, we are focused primarily in Angola on finding the kimberlite source that is shedding these stones. Our concession at Lulo that we have there is 3,000 square kilometers. Massive area, it's roughly twice the size of the Perth urban area. We have been focused on the southwest corner of the concession, uh, where we have discovered more than 500 geologic, uh, geophysical anomalies. But it is no easy feat to discover the conduit which transported the diamonds to the surface in the volcanoes hundreds of millions of years ago, which subsequently eroded and have deposited the diamonds in the river channels which we are finding now. We are using the very latest technologies. We are using experts to enhance our search amongst the many targets within these Kimberlite-rich concessions. The majority of the Kimberlites, unfortunately, lie in very remote parts of our concession, which require temporary access roads to be pushed in. So it's no mean feat. We've built over the period of more than 1,200 kilometers of road, which we've had to push through the bush. From a little video you can see going on there at the moment, which was taken two weeks ago to our target 134. Um, deep bush, not easy. That was taken during the dry season. You can imagine that during the wet season is a heck of a lot more difficult. The next slide which I'll talk to is just a summary of um, what has gone so far as far as the Kimberlite program is concerned. As I've, I'll just take you through it. As, as I said, we're over, over 500 uh, geophysical anomalies. We've drilled 164 of those. 141 of them have converted into Kimberlites, have been proven to be Kimberlites. It's an 86% hit rate, which is phenomenal. Of those 141 we've discovered, we've selected, and so far we've treated 35 bulk samples. 25 of those have been done since 2022 when we installed a dedicated bulk sample plant to treat these. Of those 35, 16 were diamondiferous. Now, a diamondiferous kimberlite is a nice thing to find because it shows you in the right area. However, not every kimberlite is diamondiferous, number one, and number two, if it is, it doesn't mean it's uh, of economic value. Less than 5% of the discovered kimberlites in the world have enough diamonds in them to be converted to a mine. So it's a serious task and quite a task we have ahead of us to discover this, but we're on it. 
Our best result that we've reported to the market so far is a target L164. In the bulk sample, we recovered 115 carats, which included, and this is the main point of why this target was so exciting, is we found type 2A diamonds in it. The largest was a 15 character, the second largest was a 12 character. We'll do more work on the pipe while we bulk sample the other areas. So while this discovery is incredibly exciting for us because of those two factors, it just proved that what we were finding in the alluvials is in a kimberlite on the property. But the size of it and the grade of it, that means the carrots per 100 tons inside it, proves that it was actually, it's too light in the pants to be a V source. It is certainly a contributor to the alluvials we've been finding downstream. So we earmark that and we're on our way to continue with the search. Diamond mining signifies and supports a large part of economies of Africa. Uh, Angola, Botswana, South Africa, Namibia, the DRC, Lesotho, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, and many more. It employs hundreds and thousands of people and contributes to communities within the host countries. Lab-grown diamonds don't do that. So in conclusion, natural diamonds really are a precious wonder of nature. And Africa is the number one destination for untapped potential. Natural diamonds are more than just beautiful gemstones. They're a testament to the wonders of our planet and they support communities. To own one is to own a piece of Mother Earth's history. Sorry to say, but you can't put that and build that in a factory. The saying goes that if you want to find elephants, you need to go to elephant country. Africa, and in particular Angola, due to its vast, unexplored countryside, is elephant country. The majors, such as Rio Tinto and De Beers, have moved back into Angola and are rolling out their extensive exploration programs to try and discover the next big things. We have the advantage in that we've been there for a while. We're well established and we are well advanced in our search for the source of these magnificent gems that we're finding from the alluvials. The carp has been busy with exploration for many years now, and although I cannot say <laughs> where the pipe is, otherwise I would have been mining it already. It is my firm opinion that we're getting closer to discovery, purely from the point of view of numbers. The number of targets we've already drilled, the number of targets we've bulk sampled, all the sorting we've done has just taken it off the bottom line of those we still need to do. The V1 or two will be discovered, and when it is, It'll be a company changer. Until then, we continue with our work and pursue the work stream of finalizing our new mineral investment contract, which has been a long-winded process. But I can report here today that it's actually in the final stages of completion. That new mineral investment contract guarantees the copper diamond the majority share of any Kimberlite discovery that we make. So, to finalize, when you go out to go and buy your next diamond, do the right thing. Purchase a natural diamond as opposed to a man-made one. You will be supporting a lot more than just the pure jeweler's profit margin. Thank you for your time.